Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the Cleverly Changing Podcast, our live virtual series. So I hope that you have been enjoying the conversations that we've had every single day from Sunday through Thursday. And today we have a special guest with us. But before we let you know who the guest is, I want to go ahead and introduce myself to you. I am Elle Cole from the blog cleverlychanging.com. I am a mom of twins. I have been homeschooling for seven years, which feels like a long time. <laughs> but I want to help you all get an understanding about homeschooling. So that's what this series is all about. My co host is Miriam. We have an audio series podcast that is available for you to listen to. Just go to cleverlychanging.com. Go to the top tab that says podcast and listen to some of our past ep episodes. So without further ado, let us introduce our guest, Kevin. Kevin, can you tell everybody who you are and what your expertise is? Hi, I'm Kevin Tom. I was well, I still am. I work for Montgomery County Public Schools. I'm a teacher there. I taught uh, second grade and first grade uh, all subject areas for seven years. And then now I'm in uh, physical education um, here in Montgomery County Public Schools. And I've been doing this for three years now, or actually, yeah, four years, actually. Awesome. Awesome. So, Miriam, go ahead and tell everybody who you are. Hi, I'm Miriam. I'm one of the hosts of the Cleverly Changing Podcast. I'm also a writer and editor and mama to four little babies. Well, only one of them's really little now, but I have four children and we've been homeschooling for about four years now. And yeah. yes, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. So today we really wanted to talk about science and also um, physical education because I think this is just such an important topic, especially when it comes to homeschooling. The thing about homeschooling is not all of that learning takes place in the house. And so that's really what we want you to understand that learning is supposed to be a fluid experience that you and your family do throughout the day. And so I like to say that we homeschool, but it is, it is our lifestyle. So homeschooling is a lifestyle. It's something that you incorporate. Our goal as homeschoolers is to really get our children to love learning. And I know Kevin is not a homeschooler, but as an educator, there is a love of learning that he shares with his students. And so I wanted to him to share some of his expertise with you guys especially parents who are afraid of science. Right now, when we think about the jobs that are gonna be available in the future, we know that all of our schools in the US are pushing more STEM. And STEM stands for science, technology, education, and math. And so we're talking to Kevin to help us learn how do we make science fun in our homes. So Kevin, kind of share your thoughts about how we can make it fun. Okay, um, so I guess the first one is just to clear up some misconceptions. So um, many people think science is just the facts, just figure out what the facts are. And that's probably the most boring way to do science. So what I was trained on is that science is it's inquiry, it's um, discussion based. Um, so, for example, we're actually we're going to be homeschooled. My kids are going to be homeschooled and we oh. you know, want to be, you know, kind of leading the science there. Um, Bell, my wife, Bella, is going to be doing the science, but I'm going to just be a support. So for example, the phases of the moon is something we always did in second grade. And it would be very boring if you just gave a book and just said, okay, here are the phases of the moon. Instead, what you would do and what they had us do in the county is that you just had a little moon journal and you go out every night and take a look at the moon and just draw a little picture of what you saw. And you do that for about 30 days and then just see, okay, what is it that we noticed and just talk about it as opposed to just like, okay, this is what that true answer is. And then that's it. But it's like, okay, let's talk about it. And then you can get in some more of those details on why you can see the moon. Does the moon actually have light or is it reflected light? So things like that is what I would say is the best way to kind of approach science as inquiry and discussion, just talk and explore, not just like, okay, let's learn about dinosaurs and let's just learn all the facts, but just discover some different components to it and maybe even look at bones and go, hmm, where were they? So a lot of more like question-based and just discussion inquiry, uh, I would say is the way to go for science. And for example, one of the things that I do 
um, is like holistic, like you were saying, like homeschooling is just not, it's like the whole, I guess the whole everything, um, is that we frequently go outside and my, my children, uh, I forgot to say, so I have uh, a son, Benjamin, who's three, and I have a son, Samuel, who's five, and then a daughter, Maddie, who's eight. And we'll often go outside and there's like a little nature preserves. And actually, if you're in McGovern County, even Prince, Prince George's County, wherever you are, there's always usually some kind of creek nearby. Yeah. It shouldn't be like super far, but there's usually like some kind of creek hidden. And that's a great place to explore. And my kids love going out there and just exploring. And they'll ask questions. And I can say, well, I could give you the answers right now. But I just have them just to think about it and say, why do you think that? Why, why do you think he's this creature is here? Why do you think that we don't see any creatures? Or when they're looking at things, they also wonder, what is this? And then that's a great uh, thing that you can incorporate like research so like well let's go home and let's think about what things we see of this creature and then try to match that to what we can find on online or by a book um so that's how i think is probably the best approach is just that you know just exploring science not just focus on just give you facts kind of those ideas i really yes. love your approach i mean that's very um hands-on and it's more like real life, you know, when the when a um, when the rain comes through and then a rainbow comes after. I mean, it's the perfect mix of sun and water. Just the it's this hair of the line that'll give you the light spectrum and things like that. That when you um, encounter them and let them ask their own questions, and then you kind of are able to use that as a diving board for a deeper understanding or deeper um activity regarding the subject and it tends to stick a lot better when they feel more immersed and engaged with it other than just let's read this chapter on how beans grow <laughs> mm -hmm. right it makes the learning practical and right. that's that's what we want to do because when i was in school you would always have that one kid who would say well what are we going to do with this are we gonna use this in real life? And they're always asking that. But if you are already approach it from, this is what real life is, and this mm -hmm. is why we're learning it, it does make that, it just makes a deeper impression in their mind so that they can retain that information. And it just helps to build those neurons. So they're putting different pieces together. So I, I like that you're doing the hands-on activities, especially for kids who are little, because just learning facts, they're like, well, what am I going to do with this? Mm -hmm. And so a little kid, they're already making different impressions. And so it's like they may not use that information right now, but then they'll, they'll have those memories in the future as they learn those facts to put them together. So I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So and definitely hands on. Definitely just got to be hands on. Yes, yes. So what are some practical ways that families can supplement their education. And I know that you have a show that families can uh, look at on YouTube. That is one way that they can supplement their education um, with science because you, can you tell us a little bit about your YouTube show? So I have a YouTube channel that was created um, by like student opinion, I guess, or just their idea. So my, my YouTube channel, Mr. Tom's Adventures, is just based on like my adventures I go on. And there's fishing on there because I love fishing, cooking, just exploring in general. And then there's also actually read alouds on there as well, just because that's like the reading adventure. Um, on there is basically the kids wanted to, me to show like what I do because they were always excited. Like, oh, you went out into the woods again? You went into the water? What were you guys doing? So I said, okay, <laughs> let me put it on, on YouTube and then you guys can take a look at that. So that is more some. So that is a resource that people can use. Um, some of this more just like entertainment to see what I'm doing, but usually I try to showcase like different areas. Like this is a place you could go to. I talk about um, Montgomery County Public Schools Smith Center, which is open to the public and they have like animals over there that you can look at. Um, and it's just, it's near Meadowside, I think Nature Center. So that's another resource right next to the, their science center. So these are all places you can go to. So pretty much I go to those places. So then it gives parents uh, kids ideas where they can nag their parents to try to take them out to go to those places and say, oh, we want to go to Lake Frank. We want to go over to um, Croydon Creek, you know, so that's that's mainly what it's there for is to show parents and students what's out there and, you know, if they don't have much exposure. Right. I think that's a great idea, especially with coronavirus going on and there's <laughs> not that many um, facilities that are open to the public and allowing, you know, 
real traffic and activity going on that taking it outdoors to the creeks and the dams and the parks and all that is, you know, that's free and it's available and it's, you know, mentally and physically and spiritually stimulating to be in that element all at the same time. And you're getting some fun education on, but shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> they won't even notice. <laughs> right, right. So that is located. So if there are people that are in this area, that's also next to Brookside Gardens, correct? Oh, we love Brookside Gardens. <laughs> Oh, what's next to Brookside is, Gardens? Is it also next to Brookside Gardens? Oh, the, the nature center? center? Oh, well, there's, I think there's, I think there's a nature center, maybe, yeah, nearby, next to it. Yeah, there, I think there's one nature center over there. So, yeah, there's nature centers scattered around. The ones that I mentioned, they're um, like Moncaster Mill Road. Oh, oh okay. out there. So that's further. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. German County. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. But there should be, um, there's always nature centers scattered around the, uh, um, the county, other county, every county. Yeah, around the state, yeah. Mm -hmm. Around the state, yeah. They're everywhere. So you kind of touched on it. Right now we are in the pandemic and a lot of families are going to be virtual schooling. And that means that their kids are going to be on digital devices for a long time. So for their downtime, parents may want to look into options that are outside of the home so that they are not just doing digital activities. So are there things that you would recommend, you know, you talked about the nature centers, but just in their own backyard mm -hmm. or, you know, walking down the street, what are some ways, some practical ways that maybe families can incorporate science in what's in their immediate area? Mm -hmm. So um, I'll go over just a couple of the, the topics, like science topics, like as far as like the county, what we would have, like there's the earth and space um, topic, what we call measurement topic, then there's life science, then there's like physical science, like rocks, I think it's physics, chemistry. Um, so outside is like a plethora of stuff. So my recommendation first is for the parents is that some parents just need to be able to be more open. Some of our little are scared. They don't like insects, they don't like bugs, they don't like kids getting dirty. And some of that they just have to let go and like, okay, we'll just, we'll just hose you down afterwards and then get some kind of containers. All those containers in your house is just good to have to collect objects. So one, easy one and it, it's a great time saver time uh freer for parents is study of rocks so you can get a bucket and have kids go out there and just find rocks in their backyard and then they can just discover all the different types of rocks different colors they can sort those rocks you, if you have a hammer you can split them open and look inside and as far as more science related to that it's just a discovery that inside of rocks you'll notice there's different properties of rocks and then they can research that later on to know what are those actual properties and how are they formed but that's like one also is unlimited as far as like identifying different plants and noticing that digging into the ground, you know, safely, you know, not, you know, certain parts, parents don't dig them up by your yard, but uh, certain spots that they can dig up and find what's underneath the ground, what's in the dirt, what's under rocks, what are certain habitats there, which is perfect. And I always recommend like those, you know, tomato jars or mason jars, like if you have these, any glass jars or containers really that, you know, you can reuse it. So that saves like some recycling. We use those. You can put some bugs in there. We've collected wolf spiders. We've collect, you know, a lot of parents, well, you don't want to collect wolf spiders, but you can do that and study them and then let them go. Um, so I think there's just so much to, to do outside. And like when it rains, you can t talk about runoff and see where does the water go and where's that water going? It goes into the, the storm drains and where does that eventually go into the creeks? So all these different things that the kids can, I would say, just collect, collect, explore. They could have a little journal, write down things that they see, like the birds, um, different plants. I had a student who was doing that um, during my summer school class, and he showed me all the different animals that he drew, and, and then he described them. Yes, what you just talked about, I have a little, since my little girls were just really little, they have been collecting rocks. And at first, I wasn't... Uh, I was annoyed. <laughs> so I was like, oh, they keep bringing these rocks into the house. But someone told me they were like, your, your kid is just collecting them. Maybe they, you know, they're into geology, you know, use that as a lesson, you know, give them a designated spot for their rocks and allow them to bring them home. So we do a lot of nature things. And so I had to I had to give them a spot and we still actually have their many rocks that they've collected over the years. And what was beautiful about it is at first I wasn't 
interested in it. But then I started to learn more about the life cycle of rocks. And I just, now I'm fascinated with rocks and I love it just as much as they did. So that's the beauty of homeschooling. It kind of expands the parents' mind as well as the kids. It's not all about just your child learning. You as a parent are also learning as well. And so we keep our, we still have our rocks and my, my daughter still collects her rocks to this day. <laughs> yes, so we have, a, we have a comment here. I'm gonna share it. Um, it says, rocks make good pets too, easy to care for. So yes, we have definitely taken the rocks and um, we painted them and put eyes on them for pet rocks. There's just so much that you can do, just like you talked about. And so I think it's something, you know, when you said parents have to kind of be open-minded, um, I know that at first I wasn't, but I had to learn how if I was going to be a better homeschool parent. And so sometimes you do have to come outside of yourself. I didn't really like bugs, but now I don't mind being outside and I don't pay attention, you know, like bugs, I'm fascinated by them now. At first I was a little creeped out. And so I think I've just seen myself grow as a parent right along with my kids. So I think there's so, there's so much, I like to take pictures of them. There are even apps that you can use to identify plants. So I've been able to identify plants and trees. So I would say parents, you know, give yourself a second chance. Even if you don't think you like bugs, hey, don't tell your kids that, just explore and learn as well. Did you want to add anything to that, Miriam? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> me and the bugs. <laughs> I'm not a fan either, but I have, because I grow food, I have made it a point to identify and know these bugs, who is friend and who is foe, because I would like, I don't grow my food to feed the army worms and the potato beetles and everything else. <laughs> so I have come to, you know, be more accepting of the bugs. Um, my children like to pick up the rocks too. The boys aren't so afraid of the bugs. We start the worm bin, so we're vermin composting, and that's just some dirt and some red regular worms. And then you throw your food scraps in there about once a week, and they get in there and they break it down, and it makes an excellent fertilizer, and it's less um, chemical reactions than making actual compost. So yeah, I mean, I'm, that's that's part of our science because I like growing things, whether they like to or not. They're going to find the life cycle of a lot of different plants and bugs, and it's fun. They're enjoying it enough, especially when they get to eat the food. <laughs> yes, yes, and growing in and of itself is like a science experiment to watch the daily progression of that. So I think that's awesome. So. Can you, oh, so we have another comment that I'm gonna share and it's from Isabel. So this is actually Kevin's wife. <laughs> and so Aww. Isabel, thank you for joining <laughs> us. Thank so, you. <laughs> and she says, the kids love digging for worms. So as a kid, I also liked digging for worms. We used to keep them <laughs> in a jar. And uh, it's funny because, you know, as a kid, you're not so afraid of bugs. But right. as you grow, it's like, oh, bugs. But now mm -hmm. worms are our friends. So they help keep our dirt very fertilized and great for our garden. So I really like worms now. So, yes. Me too. Even little Ryo will pick up a worm and I'm like, what? <laughs> Yes. So Kevin, for families who are looking to maybe do some science experiments this year, do you have any um, suggestions? Because here's the thing, science, sure, we can put an age group um, to the project, but really it doesn't matter because it's learning for whatever age group, because science yeah. is one of those things where it's always changing, nothing is the same, and it's different for everybody. So are there some easy or simple experiments that you would recommend for families? Mm -hmm. uh, and again, it's always on just observing and exploring. So one that we actually just did recently was just you know talking about chemical reactions. We didn't say chemical reactions, but I said, look what's gonna happen when we put this egg in vinegar. 
So that is one is just to see the chemical reaction with vinegar because the way vinegar reacts with baking soda as well. So that's another one that kids love, you know, putting that in and just seeing the reaction. Yeah. That is. So that is one. So those are always like, those are like two connected ones. Um, I, a lot of people will say use a boiled egg. I use the raw egg, which makes it more fun. So you use a raw <laughs> egg and a, oh, and, yes. a, and, a, and, a, and a glass, you know, container, and then you put in some vinegar with that. And it usually just takes about 24 hours or so. And then when you touch it, it'll be very soft. Almost like, hey, what happened to the shell? And then you can talk oh. about how you know the chemical reaction dissolved and whatnot. Um, but if you poke the egg, so for all those homeschoolers out there, you'll know it actually pops. So I did that. And I got a big scream from my daughter. So if you like <laughs> poke it, it'll like pop. It'll just, it'll just know that. Um, but oh you goodness. can feel the shell as a poke, and then you can feel how soft the shell is afterwards. Uh, another one is where you already suggested as far as the plants. Uh, that's also a two component one too. So going outside and discovering the different types of soil, because there are different types of soil yes. that makes it up. So one is just exploring that and then get books about it to figure out, okay, so what is this kind of soil? Why is this soil so black? Why, what is this called? What is this like little browner soil? And what's this like reddish kind of soil? So they can explore that and then do experiments on like water and how it penetrates different types of soils. Um, and so you got different containers to show that variable. And then you could also do what we already said as far as plants. That's always great is growing plants. And you can do that with so many different variables to use different types of soil, use different water, use um, diff or, or different amounts of water to put on it and different locations as far as sun. Um, another one that I really love is what I'm currently doing now. And I'll show that to you guys right here. So this is our brine shrimp experiment. And you can get brine shrimp eggs off oh. of like Amazon or something, you know, online or pet stores. And that's a great experiment because they they will hatch in like 36 hours. And you can use, it's very simple. You just put water, put some brine brine salt shrimp. in there, just stir it around and they will hatch. And you can use different variables. So as you can see, we had like three variables here. And then on, I, I tape a cardboard underneath each of those containers. So it's less likely that someone will knock it over and spill it. And then you can see different salinities to see which one helped um, produce more um, brine shrimp to hatch. And that's always cool. And it talks about microscopic creatures. So that's also that that science element is there's mic microscopic type types of things out there. Now so those that are all very easy fun. ones. Yeah. And it's very low maintenance. You just need a jar of salt, water, and then some brine shrimp eggs. And I have a quick question, Kevin. Mm -hmm. What okay, one of our biggest questions that we always get is what's a good curriculum to use? So I'm going to pass that to you and ask you what is a good what what science um, ah, blah, what science curriculum would you recommend for homeschoolers that are looking for an A plus science? Right. So when I was looking with my wife, because we we're trying to do the curriculum and then coming from my background, I was like, mm, I don't know about this one. <laughs> and like I said, it's more of, I would say a curriculum that looks like it's the way, the way it approaches it. If it's more of like exploring um, discussion, inquiry kind of thing, as opposed to just learning facts, that's what you would kind of look for. Look for that. Okay. But also that's not necessary. If it gives you good content, you can use that same inquiry base that we're talking about exploring for, um, regarding that. And, and just as another resource, um, as far as Montgomery County Public Schools, we use the Next Gen Science and the website's nextgenscience.org. And on there, if you actually go to NCPS, you can just type it in and you can actually see all these different categories that can help homeschoolers know, oh, this gives a good framework of different topics that would be good to kind of look into and study because it kind of gives you an idea of like content to, to um, look into. And that's, that's how kind of how I'm going to approach it for this coming year. Yes. Yeah, that's usually what we do. But I know a lot of people, you know, everybody and me included, I'm talking about myself too. A lot of folk want something that's just, you know, simple, pull it out the box. Let's do this and not have to really, you know, do all the preparatory work and lay out ideas and everything. It's, especially when you have multiple children or you work from home, you've got a busy schedule. It can be, it can feel a little more daunting to you know, try to come up with all these things as opposed to someone saying, here, this is what you do. <laughs> yes. So when my girls were little, we had a curriculum. I always supplemented by adding um, 
hands-on activities. So I think what you mentioned is awesome. So I think whatever curriculum that families can use, they can always supplement that by maybe going on Pinterest, by just typing that subject in and seeing, okay, so what can we do today that really um, gets them outside or gets them exploring in another way? So any curriculum, like even if the parents are learning the facts and while they're outside, they're sharing those facts and how they apply in nature, that's probably a really great way to make any curriculum work. And that's really what we did when we started out because I just felt like for young kids, it's so important for that hands-on component, which is, you know, especially if you have a kinesthetic child that likes to touch things, they need to be able to. And so any curriculum, you can kind of make it explore, but you have to be open-minded, which we talked about earlier. So we have another comment here that I'm gonna share. It says, it's standards-based, so the possibilities are almost endless. So she's talking about the next gen uh, curriculum that you mentioned about Montgomery County. So that is awesome. And families can utilize these resources wherever they are. It's not something, you know, it's not something that they have to sign into the county's website. It's something that they can just go to and it's available for them to see. So are there any other tips that you would give families to help them feel more comfortable? Um, you did talk about, you know, going outside exploring, but for the parent who's a little bit apprehensive about maybe science experiments and um, things, how, how can a parent kind of change their perspective so that their children approach, can approach it from a more open standpoint? Well, I think probably just the more knowledge is is the best thing. So if you're feeling a little apprehensive, it's always just learning, you know, the, the, the correct tools or the correct strategies to approach something. And they may just not know the correct strategies and that's why they feel a little more uncomfortable. They're not sure how it works. So um, I think there's probably plenty of resources like on YouTube or just out there. If you just search like science, how to teach science, or if you just get as much information as you can, like how, how to approach it. I think that would probably um, alleviate some anxieties, but I think just the simplicity is just thinking, like, just keep it as a discussion, what we would call science talks. Just having a science talk. A science talk is fine, you know, if it's the weather outside and just talking with your kids and just, I guess, just being compassionate on yourself, not feeling like, well, I'm messing this up. Just like a science talk going outside and just like, oh, well, look at the weather upstairs. Look at, look at, not upstairs, but look at the weather outside and say, okay, it looks kind of cloudy. I wonder why that, it looks cloudy or what are, what are those white things in the sky? What do you think that is? And just talking about it and not have to feel the pressure of like, oh, well, I don't know the answers. Just that discussion, just that discourse of talking is, is a great thing. So you don't have to feel like you have to know the answer. So that's probably my tip. Don't feel like you have to know the answers. Just discussing and talking about is 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 great and just say you know what hmm, not sure maybe we can research that more you know but just talking yes and that's so important because when our children see us learning and exploring it helps them realize how they can solve problems on their on their own how they can look up information how they can research so we are actually setting that foundation when we give them permission to search for things they don't know. If we're open and honest and say, hey, we don't know everything, but we can help you find it, that shows children how to look for those resources. And so that's a, an important skill. That's an important life skill. So I think that you just shared a lot of things that were so important for us. So thank you so much for sharing your expertise. Miriam, is there any other questions that you would Ooh, like to ask? Um, <laughs> uh, off the top of my head, no, I think we, we covered a lot here. I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. I did, because science is so much fun for me. It's, me no science. I have, so, <laughs> I have so many questions, and they know I have questions, and we answer them together and look for, you know, I think we just, said was you know spot on not knowing it's okay not to know everything but as long as you know how to look for something 
you're well on your way. Okay. That's awesome. Kevin, can you tell everybody how they can find your YouTube channel? Okay. So if you go, it used to be hard to get to it, but if you just type in Mr. Tom's Adventures in a search engine, it should pop up on there now. But if you can't for some reason, you can just go to YouTube and you type in Mr. Tom's Adventures, you should be able to find it. I also have a PE channel that I'm using for my school, and that's Mr. Tom PE. And I put some PE, you know, kind of some things on there, and there's gonna be a lot more this year since we're all virtual. Okay, awesome. So what I will do, I will put those links in the comment section when our conversation is over. And everybody, you can check out his YouTube channel. Please subscribe and let your kids see, you know, what Mr. Tom is exploring. So thank you so much for tuning in today. And remember, you can listen to past episodes on YouTube. Or you can go to cleverlychanging.com and go to the word podcast to find past shows as well. So thank you so much for tuning in today. And thank you, Tom, for sharing your expertise. And we get to see your fish that you have. Yeah, there's a little fish being for you guys. So you guys can see that. That's the yellow perch there. Just ate that tilapia fish. You caught that in the in the stream yeah, nearby? Yeah, regional park. Oh. Oh, that's one of our oh, class pets that we had when school was in session. Oh, that's awesome. Hey. Goldfish. Well, thank you. Great. Recommend it. Okay. So so Kevin is Kevin is actually recommending that families, if you're looking for a pet that's not hairy and it's not, you know, gonna touch you or anything, get a fish. I know at my house we have fish and thanks to mr kevin kevin actually we've had our fish for many years now i would say over five years and yeah. it's all thanks to kevin he has helped expand me i didn't really want pets but i could do fish and thanks to kevin we have fish so it's something that my girls have really enjoyed keeping taking care of them and not giving them too much food it's something that they learned from little bitty and we still have them so I never knew fish could live so long. So thank you for that. <laughs> All right, everybody. So we hope that you enjoyed this podcast and we invite you to tune in to future episodes. All right, bye for now. Thanks, Carly.